Hey everybody, this is the MSI B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi. It's an MATX motherboard that is currently priced around $117 US. Today I'm going to unbox this motherboard and do a deep dive to see if the features it offers are enough for you to consider when shopping for components. Welcome to the middle of nowhere. I always like to have a look at a box before diving into what's inside and then covering the features. To me, this is the first thing you see if you're shopping in a brick and mortar store, and if you're shopping online, the box is still usually one of the first images you see, even if paired with the motherboard. The VDH box is, to put it bluntly, rather boring. It's black and white with writing and has the usual highlight information on the front and sides. As for the back of the box, there is a bit more in-depth information about the motherboard, a picture of it, and a diagram of the rear I.O. Maybe the box is plain because this is a Pro Series motherboard and not one of MSI's MAG, MEG, or MPG boards, which are more aimed at gamers and also more expensive. Do note, there's no sticker, on this box at least, saying the Pro VDH is Ryzen 5000 ready, so it's possible the BIOS isn't updated enough to handle those CPUs yet. This doesn't mean all Pro VDH Wi-Fi boards aren't Ryzen 5000 ready, just this particular one. My advice here is to just keep an eye out for the sticker when shopping. If it's present, you won't have to update the BIOS to use your spiffy new Ryzen 5000 CPU. Additionally, let me bring your stress levels down even further. The Pro VDH has a BIOS flash button on the rear I.O. so you can update the BIOS without a CPU or RAM installed, ensuring your new Ryzen 5000 CPU will work when you install it. All right, let's unbox this thing. Upon opening the Pro VDH, you'll see the motherboard in an anti-static bag resting on a removable cardboard insert. Under that, you'll find a case badge sticker, a registration card to follow your motherboard with MSI. You'll want to do this in case anything should happen to the motherboard, as you can then file an RMA request to get it fixed or replaced. A promotional card urging you to join the MSI rewards program as well. From what I could tell, registering products earns you points. With enough points, you can get access to events, exclusive rewards, and you can redeem your points for game codes and other products. A driver disc, aka coaster which by this point has to be pointless and wasteful as optical media just isn't that common anymore. It's also a best practice anyway to download the most recent drivers and BIOS from the motherboard support page instead of relying what's on the disk. I'd much rather see companies include a USB stick with the drivers. It would just be way more useful as it could also double as a small storage device. Next up in four plastic one-use bags are two SATA cables, one of which is a 90 degrees. You get three M.2 screws. There's only two M.2 slots, so maybe one of them is extra, which is nice. Antennas and installation instructions for the Wi-Fi, and of course, a rear I.O. shield as it's not integrated. I'd like two things here. One, consolidate all the pieces into one reusable bag, and two, pre-install the M.2 screws into the M.2 standoffs, so they can't be lost. The Gigabyte B550M Aorus Pro P does this, and I like it because again, you won't lose your screws, and it saves on having to use the stupid little plastic baggie. I've done a video on the Aorus Pro P as well, so definitely check that out if you want to learn more about it. Finally, there's a quick installation guide. Unfortunately, you do not get a full user manual. However, you can find it in the support section on the Pro VDH Wi-Fi's product page and download it. I would have liked to have at least seen a QR code to the full manual on the quick guide. This way you could download it to your phone or tablet. There are other QR codes leading you to YouTube or Youku videos, but I found these did not all work. This is not a good user experience, MSI. Include a full fat manual or at least a QR code to it. Overall, what's included are standard accessories for a motherboard at this price, which is again, just over $117 at the time of this video. And if you're interested in the Pro VDH, I've put a link to it in the description as well. As for all these one-use plastic bags, I give MSI a D-. Outside of the anti-static bag, there should be only one other bag for the aforementioned goodies, and it should be reusable. As for the motherboard itself, I wouldn't say the B50M Pro VDH Wi-Fi is a looker. There are no lighting zones, no splashy logos, and no sleek angular designs. Instead, the motherboard is all black, as are the integrated VRM, M.2, and chipset heatsinks. This is a pretty unassuming and plain motherboard. The only real contrast comes from the silver color of all the solder points, capacitors, chokes, and other bits. Maybe the lack of design elements is a cost-saving measure to keep the motherboard's price down, while allowing for those design expenses to be put into adding to the board's functionality. Let's find out.
The M in MATX stands for micro, and that's exactly what the MSI B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi motherboard is. It's an MATX motherboard that measures 244 millimeters by 244 millimeters. Because it is smaller than your standard ATX motherboard, it should fit in almost any ATX compatible case, as well as those cases designed for smaller motherboards. As always, check your case's motherboard compatibility. The MSI B50M Pro VDH Wi-Fi supports Ryzen 5000 and 5000G, 4000G, and 3000 series CPUs. Depending on when you bought your motherboard, you may need to do a BIOS update to use the most current Ryzen CPUs, including those CPUs just released in April of 2022. Do note there does not seem to be support for Ryzen 3000G, 2000 or 2000G, or 1000 series CPUs. You'll find four slots for your DDR4 memory on the Pro VDH with dual channel support, and you can install up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. The motherboard also supports a wide variety of RAM speeds starting at 2133 and going all the way up to 4400. I recommend using DDR4 3600 CL16 or CL18 RAM as these kits are the most affordable. If you can find it and it's not too expensive, go for DDR4 3600 CL14. If you're feeling adventurous, you can also try using 3800 or 4000 speed RAM, but you may not be able to keep a 1 to 1 ratio with the Infinity Fabric for your CPU. Also, faster RAM tends to not only be more expensive, but also have slower cast latency timings, thus erasing any advantage those faster speeds might provide. On a side note, if you only have one RAM stick, insert it into slot DIMM A2 or the second slot away from the CPU. If you're using two sticks of RAM, install them in the slots DIMM A2 and DIMM B2 or the second and fourth slots when going away from the CPU. This will let you take advantage of dual channel speeds when using two sticks. I always urge people to get a two stick RAM kit over a single stick so they can take advantage of the performance increase dual channel mode provides. There are three PCIe slots on this motherboard. The top slot is by 16 in speed and length and is for your graphics card. If you're using a Ryzen 3000 or 5000 series CPU, you'll be able to take advantage of the Gen 4 PCIe speeds these CPUs provide. Using a Ryzen 4000G or 5000G series CPU or the newly released 5500, 4400 or 4100 CPU will restrict your GPU to PCIe 3.0 speeds. This slot also features MSI's steel armor design, which like Asus's safe slot technology or Gigabyte's ultra durable PCIe armor is metal reinforcement to prevent heavier GPUs from sagging or even breaking the PCIe slot. The second and third PCIe slots are by one in length and speed. Both of these slots are PCIe 3.0 enabled and powered by the FIFA 50 chipset. I'm a little disappointed there isn't a second by 16 slot that's by four or by eight in speed for larger expansion cards or cards that would need more lanes. For those of you who will be using RGB components, you'll find four headers on this motherboard. There are two 4-pin 12-volt RGB headers and two 3-pin 5-volt ARGB headers. You can find the two 4-pin RGB headers next to each other at the bottom of the motherboard on the left side. One 3-pin ARGB header is at the top near the fourth RAM slot and the other lives at the lower right side of the motherboard. You can control any RGB components or peripherals connected to the motherboard using MSI's Mystic Light software. You will find a total of five 4-pin PWM fan headers on this motherboard. There's one CPU fan header, one water cooling CPU fan header, and three system fan headers. Do note the fan headers are different, with the pump header being able to provide the most watts and amps. The CPU header has a max current of 2 amps and max power of 24 watts, while the pump header can provide 3 amps and 36 watts. Each of the three system fan headers have a max current of 1 amp and max power of 12 watts. So what does this mean for you? Basically, if you use an AIO or do a custom loop with this board, use the pump header for the pump and not any other fan header. The Pro VDH has four SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports and two M.2 slots. The top M.2 slot supports SATA or PCIe M.2 drives. It can operate at PCIe 4.0 by 4 speeds should you have a Ryzen 5000 or 3000 series CPU. But if you're using a 4000G, 5000G, 4000 series CPU, or a Ryzen 5500, it will run at PCIe 3.0 speeds. PCIe drives in the bottom slot will only run at PCIe 3.0 by 4 speeds. If you need PCIe 4.0 speeds for creative work, my suggestion is to put your OS on a PCIe 3.0 drive and insert it into the bottom slot while reserving the top M.2 slot for a PCIe 4.0 capable NVMe M.2 drive and use it for your scratch disk. Only the top M.2 slot has a heat sink to help keep your drive temperatures down and both slots support drive lengths of 42, 60, and 80 millimeters. For those looking to set up a RAID array, the four SATA 6 gigabit per second connectors support RAID 0, 1, or 10, and you can set up RAID 0 and 1 with M.2 NVMe drives. There are loads of internal connectors on the MSI B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi.
The standard 24-pin ATX main power connector is in the usual spot at the side of the motherboard, and the 8-pin ATX 12-volt CPU power connector is at the top left. There is no 4-pin supplemental power for the CPU. Just make sure your power supply has an 8-pin or 4 plus 4-pin CPU connector. One of the things that surprised me with the B5DM Pro VDH Wi-Fi is the amount of internal USB connectors. There are two USB 2.0 headers, which is pretty standard, and one USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, also standard. The USB 3.2 Gen 1 header is also at a 90 degree angle, which may help organizing this rather bulky cable. As always, I recommend looking into a low profile adapter for the USB 3.2 Gen 1 cable due to its bulkiness. It makes cable management easier and will make your PC build look cleaner. I put a link to one in the description below. A connector I did not expect to find on such an inexpensive B5D motherboard is a USB Type-C connector for the front panel. It is USB 3.2 Gen 1 and not Gen 2, so it's running at 5 gigabits per second and not 10, but at least it's present. And should your case have a Type-C port, you can make use of it. As for the rest of the internal connectors, here's what you'll find. The front panel audio connector is on the bottom left of the motherboard, and it supports HD audio. Moving past two RGB and one fan header is a COM serial port header. This header allows you to plug in a serial port cable, which then lets you use serial port devices. Next to that is the chassis intrusion header. Moving past the two USB 2.0 headers is your speaker and front panel connector. Here you can plug in any provided panel cables from your case, such as for power and reset buttons, hard drive, activity light, etc. Next to those is an easy LED control switch. This switch is used to switch on or off all the LEDs of the motherboard. From the sound of it, it just switches off the debug LED lights. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but you can. To the right of the top M.2 slot is a TPM header. If you're curious about what TPM is and what you can do with it, be sure to check out my video on the subject. You'll find the clear CMOS jumper next to the CMOS battery. Because there is no clear CMOS button, you'll need to bridge the two pins to clear the CMOS. This is easy to do with a screwdriver, just be sure your computer is off and unplugged first. Since the MSI B550M Pro VDH is a budget motherboard, you won't find any onboard power, reset, or clear CMOS buttons. While there is no Q code reader, this MSI motherboard does at least use easy debug LEDs. You'll find these four LEDs above the 24-pin ATX power connector. The four lights correspond to your CPU, DRAM, VGA, and PCIe devices, including PCIe M.2 drives, and then finally your boot drive. If a light stays on, it means that a particular component is not being detected or has failed. The first step to troubleshooting such an issue is usually to unplug and replug the component to make sure it's fully seated. I've had this happen a few times with RAM and also my DisplayPort cable not being completely inserted. The audio on the MSI B5DM Pro VDH Wi-Fi uses the Realtek ALC892 slash ALC897 codec with support for 7.1 channel surround sound and high definition audio. Honestly though, you're probably better off getting either a PCIe sound card or an external USB audio device that has all the audio inputs and outputs you need. To even be able to use 7.1 surround sound with this motherboard, you'll need to make use of your case's front audio connectors as well as the three on the back of the motherboard, and it seems like quite the hassle. Other audio features include isolating the audio components on the motherboard so you have a cleaner listening experience and separate PCB layers for the left and right audio channels. There's also a dedicated high definition audio processor and MSI claims to be using high quality audio capacitors. I tried to find out which ones exactly in case you were interested, but had no luck. As previously mentioned, there is a BIOS flash button. With this, you can download a BIOS onto your USB drive, insert it into a USB port, and then push the button to update the BIOS. The dedicated BIOS flash USB port is the one right below the HDMI port, so make sure you use that one when flashing the BIOS. The great thing about flashing the BIOS this way is you don't even need a CPU or RAM installed. You only need to plug in a power cable to the CPU and ATX connection. Should you do this before assembling the PC, you'll want to find out which BIOS version is on your motherboard. If there's no sticker on the chip or any other indicator in the manual or on the motherboard itself, contact MSI's customer service. Provide the date of the purchase and they should be able to tell you which BIOS is on the motherboard. I did this with the B550M Gigabyte Aorus Pro P and they got back to me after a week or so with the BIOS version for my motherboard. If you're using a CPU with integrated graphics, you'll be able to make use of one of the three display outputs on the Pro VDH. There's a display port, an HDMI port, and a VGA port. Yes, I said VGA. Both the DisplayPort and HDMI port can display a maximum resolution of 4096 by 2160 at 60 Hz. The VGA port supports resolutions of 2048 by 1536 at 50 Hz, 2048 by 1280 at 60 Hz, and 1920 by 1200 at 60 Hz. Having HDMI 2.1 is fantastic should you use this motherboard to set up a home theater PC and you have a TV or projector that can take advantage of those features. 
I could not find which version of DisplayPort the motherboard uses, so assume 1.2 or 1.4. Finally, I do not know why there is a VGA port on the motherboard, unless security monitors still use this ancient output, or your monitor is so old the 1980s are calling and want it back. There are a total of 6 USB ports on the Pro VDH. You'll find 4 USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and 2 USB 2.0 ports. If you have more than 6 USB devices, you'll definitely want to find a motherboard that can better suit your needs. However, having said that, even if you're a streamer, there are enough ports for a keyboard, mouse, USB headset, and an Elgato Stream Deck and Wave 3 microphone. You'll even have one port left over. Above the USB 2.0 ports is a serial port. You'll be able to connect a keyboard, mouse, or another peripheral that uses this legacy port. Why MSI decided to include this is beyond me, but maybe there's a niche use for it, just like with the VGA connection. As for your wireless and wired connection, the Pro VDH uses the Realtek RTL81101HN 1 gigabit per second LAN controller. That is a mouthful. Unfortunately, it does not offer a 2.5 gigabit solution. With regards to the Wi Fi module, it uses the Intel dual band wireless AC3168 solution and supports 802.11abgn AC at 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz, with speeds up to 433 megabits per second. It also has dual mode Bluetooth and supports Bluetooth 2.1, 2.1 plus EDR, 3.0, 4.0, BLE, 4.2, but not Bluetooth 5. Don't forget to install the two antennas if you intend to use the wireless features of this motherboard. It's unclear whether or not you can actually upgrade this wireless solution, but it does kind of fit into this weird looking M.2 slot, so if you can get to it, I bet you could. Finally, we come to the rear audio, and as previously mentioned, the Pro VDH uses the Realtek ALC892 slash ALC897 codec. There are three outputs on the back. You get a line in, a line out, and a mic in. You'll plug your headphones into the line out jack. As I previously mentioned, you can set up a 7.1 surround sound audio solution using this motherboard, but it will take some doing. You'll need to install the Realtek audio console software and plug in various audio jacks into the rear and front audio port. And by front audio ports, I do mean the headphone and mic jack that is on your case. This is really an inelegant solution. And like I said before, I think investing in a good PCIe sound card or an external audio solution would be your best bet. I really wish MSI would have just put all five jacks on the back of the motherboard like most other manufacturers make, but the budget motherboards tend to only have three jacks and then try and say, hey, you could still do 7.1 audio surround sound if you go to these lengthy steps. When it comes to power delivery, the MSI B50M Pro VDH Wi-Fi has a seven-phase power delivery and uses one heatsink for the VRM. According to information I found in a Tom's Hardware article from September of 2020, the power delivery is set up in a 4 plus 2 plus 1 configuration for the V-Core, SoC, and memory. The V-Core and SoC use a combination of two high and two low side MOSFETs for each phase. In this case, an on-semiconductor 46A4C029N on the high side and 78A4C024N for the low side. If you're not sure what that means, that's okay. Toms did go on to say that while power delivery isn't the most robust, they also had zero problems running a 3900X with this motherboard at stock speeds or when overclocked. To me, this is encouraging should you want to use a power-hungry CPU with this motherboard. The heatsink is essentially a slab of metal with some ridges and thermal pad underneath. It is at least screwed in properly and not push pinned. Well, that's about it for the MSI B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi. You can currently buy this motherboard for around $117 or so, as I previously mentioned. This price sets the Pro VDH as one of the more affordable B550 motherboards out there, and the features it has keeps pace with similarly priced boards. Having said that, I don't think I'd choose this motherboard when it's ATX sibling, the B550A Pro, which I've reviewed has similar features, a beefier power delivery, more PCIe slots, and more USB ports on the back, including a Type-C port for around only $30 more. The only thing the A Pro doesn't have compared to the VDH is Wi-Fi, so if that's an absolute necessity, then obviously the A Pro won't cut it. But let's say I can't spend more than $117 to $120 bucks on a motherboard. Looking at the price range leaves me with two additional worthwhile options. The Gigabyte B50M DSA3H AC and the ASRock B50M AC. All three motherboards are very similar, but after having looked at them, I'd say the MSI and Gigabyte boards are the most closest to each other, feature-wise. And picking between the two of them would come down to what exactly I need in my motherboard. If I'm just going for gaming, I'd probably lean towards the MSI motherboard as it comes out ahead ever so slightly with a Type-C front panel connector, an M.2 heatsink, a VRM heatsink that's properly screwed in instead of push pinned, and it has more fan headers. Ultimately, the Pro VDH is a fairly affordable choice for those PC builders who can't spend a lot on a motherboard or just don't want to. 
If you don't need every single bell and whistle, but do want some of them, then the MSI B50M Pro VDH Wi-Fi is worth taking a look at. And that's all I have to say about that. Thanks for watching everybody. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it helpful, hit that like button and share any questions or comments you have down below. You can show your support for the channel by clicking subscribe and don't forget to click that notification icon so you don't miss out on any future content. And hey, while you're here, why not check out some of the other videos I've made? I'm Seth and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.